All right, so let's do some examples, um, do a variety here, and we'll also do a lot more examples in the worksheet. Um, so this first one, I'm actually going to approach in two different ways, sort of the more formal way that I told you, and then the um, shortcut way. So let me go and do it first by saying that the, so let me just rewrite it. Highest power in the denominator is x, and so we would divide through by x. So if I divide the numerator by x, I'm going to get 2 minus 1 over x. If I divide the denominator, I'm going to get 2 over x plus 3. Okay, and then when I take all of these off to infinity, 2 goes to 2, 1 over x goes to 0, 2 over x goes to 0, and 3 goes to 3 and I end up with 2 over 3. Okay, but more likely than not, in a problem like this, we would just look at it and... So I've made it a little trickier because I didn't order the denominator in the um, standard manner. Um, but if we look, we have a highest power of x in the numerator and, and x in the denominator. And in fact, the coefficients of those terms, the leading coefficients are 2 over 3. And that would have allowed me to just say 2 over 3. So I can do that directly. I don't even have to do much more than just look at it. Okay. So now I'm going to jump, so that was a relatively um, uh, straightforward one. Now I'm going to look to one that's much less straightforward. Okay, so now we don't have polynomials solely anymore. We have this radical in the denominator. So we can use a very similar approach. We're still going to um, divide through by what's essentially the highest power in the denominator. Okay, so... I'm going to say limit as x approaches to infinity. Now, if you look at the denominator here, you have the square root of x squared minus x. Now, x squared in there is going to dominate over the minus x. So let's just approximate it by saying it's x squared. And so what we have is the square root of x squared. Now, the square root of x squared, certainly if we're talking about positive numbers, is just x. So I'm just going to consider the highest power in the denominator to be x. So I'm going to divide the top by x, and I'm going to divide the bottom by x, the denominator by x. Let me just clean that up. Except when I divide the denominator by x, I note that what I just noticed before is that the square root of x squared equals x for positive x's. Okay, or even zero, I can include. Um, so instead of writing it as x, I'm going to write it as the square root of x squared. All right, that'll then allow me to say the limit as x approaches infinity, the numerator becomes one. The denominator, I'm going to put all under one square root, and I get x squared over x squared, I get one, minus x over x squared, which would be one over x. And now I'm able to do my limit because 1 will go to 1, 1 down here will go to 1, 1 over x squared will go to 0, as I'm going to infinity. And so I get 1 over the square root of 1, I get 1. Okay, now I'm going to twist this a little bit. Same function except this time be careful because now in this one I'm going to go to negative infinity how is that going to change the problem well I'm going to start with the same approach oops negative infinity I'm going to divide through by x what's equivalent uh, to x in this problem but here's the issue, is what I divide through. Remember that the square root of x squared is actually negative x 
for x less than zero because x in in here is a negative number when it's squared and square rooted it becomes positive so if i want the same number that i started out with i would have to put a negative i'm sorry if i want the opposite of the number i started out with i'd have to put a negative in front in order to balance that for instance if i put negative three into the left i would get negative three squared is nine squared of nine is i would get three if, I, if x is negative 3, the only way to get 3 is to put another negative on it. So, that means if I want to replace x, I'm going to use negative square root of x squared. I'm going to negative infinity. So that's my negative square root of x squared there. That's the only difference. Everything else is going to carry out in a very similar manner. The numerator becomes 1. The denominator becomes there's a negative on the outside. 1 minus 1 over x, just like before. And now when I take my limits, numerator goes to 1. Denominator inside goes to 1. 1 over x squared, even though we're going negative infinity, goes to 0. So I get 1 over negative the square root of 1. I get negative 1 in this case. So interestingly enough, between these two problems, as I go to positive infinity, I get 1, and negative infinity, I get negative 1. That's interesting because that's actually another example of a function that has two different horizontal asymptotes, one in the positive direction and a different one in the negative direction. Okay, and let's take a look at another example. All right. Limit as x approaches infinity sine 2x over x. Now the issue here is, so I'm going to, again, do this in two different ways, a more formal and then a more thought process way. So the problem is that sine 2x, as x goes off to infinity, doesn't go to anything. All right, sine 2x um, would just keep, as we go off to positive infinity, it's just going to keep oscillating. It doesn't go anything, so I can't really um, do anything with that numerator there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, this is a good example of where um, I can use um, a nice uh, theorem that we looked at in the past called the squeeze theorem. Now, one thing I should note is, this is not that special limit situation. That special limit situation was when we had x approaching 0. So this is not that one where I try and put a 2 and match a 2. This is a whole different situation. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, sine 2x falls between negative 1 and 1, because it's a sine. It always has to be. Then divide through by x. Okay, and then if I take the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x, and I take the limit as x approaches uh, infinity of 1 over x, both of these are 0, meaning that the limit as x approaches infinity of sine 2x over x is 0, by the squeeze theorem. Okay, so that would be kind of very formal way of doing it and very correct, uh, very nice way. But we could just apply some logic here and say, let's take a look. Sine 2x here is bounded by uh, 1 and negative 1. So this is always between negative 1 and 1, and 1, positive 1, sorry. Whereas the denominator is going off to infinity. So even though the numerator isn't fixed at a constant, it's bounded. And that's not going to really affect the denominator dominating over this whole thing and taking it off to 0. So I could have used that logic and basically say that this is 0. 
In essence, the numerator is acting like a constant here, but it's not actually fixed at a constant, but being bounded, it doesn't, it isn't able to overcome the denominator. Okay, another example. Limit as x approaches negative infinity 3 over 1 plus 2 e to the x. All right, so all we're going to do here, it's basically set up. We have to look at each term and see what's going to happen. So as x goes to negative infinity, 3, a constant, stays at 3. 1 stays at 1. All right, now I need to know what happens to 2 e to the x. Okay, but as x goes to negative infinity, that means e to the x is actually going to go to zero because if these are getting to be giant negative numbers e to the negative x i'm sorry e to the x with those negatives in there are going to get uh smaller and smaller okay because essentially we're looking at e to the x like this and we're going back this way so they're going to zero overall i get three over one i get three Okay, a few more examples um, because I want to take a take a look at a situation um, which we really haven't um, formally addressed here is we've talked about limits of infinity and limits at infinity. Can we get both at the same time? Oh yes, yeah, sure. We can get infinite limits at infinity. So we have to consider that we might get those here. All right. So the idea is we're looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the 2x. Well, e to the 2x looks a lot like e to the x, so it basically looks like this. And if we're asking what happens as we go off to positive infinity here, we see that the function also goes off to positive infinity as well. So our answer here, infinity. All right. So now down here, I'm again going to go off to infinity and I have I have a situation here again I can notice generally what's happening I have uh, an x cubed on the top and an x in the bottom so that tells me that my numerator is dominating so I should get a type of infinity but we're gonna have to look closer all right so I do know that this is basically infinity and infinity, but I have to decide, is it plus or minus? Well, let's take a look. I'm putting in big positive numbers. So the x cubed is still positive, but then I throw a negative on it. So I have negative numbers in the numerator. I'm going to positive infinity, so I have positive numbers down here. So I have negative over positive, so these are going to be negative numbers, and hence the negative infinity. Okay. All right, down here, let's take a look at another sort of situation like this. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the sixth over x cubed plus 2x minus 5. Okay, again, I have the numerator at x to the sixth dominating over the denominator at x cubed. So I know this is going to be some type of infinity. So let's figure out what, what it is. Well, I I'm going to negative infinity, so I have these giant negative numbers. But when they go into x to the 6, they become positive. When the negative numbers go into x cubed, though, they're still negative. So I have positive over negative, And so, again, I have negative infinity. All right. Good.